All right, so an important part of every morning coming on shift for engineers, driver engineers, is that we have to check the truck completely. We have to check everything about it. Um, we're gonna check, we're gonna run the pump. Over here we have the, the pump panel. I'm gonna make sure all the, every, all the fittings are tight. Everything's here as it should be. Everything's closed off and where it should be closed off. Um, I'm gonna run the pump. Uh, I'm gonna introduce water into the pump, get it going, make sure I can get the pressure up to the proper uh, PSI that it needs to be. Um, and as that's going, I'm gonna go ahead and check the rest of the truck, um, each compartment going down by down. Um, we have the engineer compartment here, and uh, you know that's all of our fittings and stuff like that. There's a lot of pieces there, a lot of little pieces there. You have to make sure that every one of them's there because you never know when you'll need them on a fire scene. Another important part is, uh, Checking our air bottles, making sure we have air because you really can't tell, obviously, by looking at them. But we have to make sure we're, they're all full. You don't want to, even a bottle that's half full. Yeah, it has a little air in there, but you do not want to give someone a half full bottle. Some more cribbing in there, car accidents. Another thing that I like to do is make sure we have nice ice cold water in case we get it on a fire scene. Um, so I'll be filling up uh, the cooler with ice, make sure we have plenty of water. Um, we'll be checking the chainsaws, running the chainsaws. Um, we also have a, a fan for ventilation. We have a fan for ventilation and we have to check that um, as well. They're all gas powered. Um, we need to make sure we have enough fuel in them, make sure they start and make sure we have enough backup reserve fuel just in case. Coming around to the back, um, obviously I'm gonna check the condition of the hoses, make sure that they're properly stored that they're not going to fall out on me when I'm driving uh, make sure that they're ready to go in case we are on a fire scene you know um, where I need to lay hose as fast as I can I want to make sure they're there I want to make sure all my tools are here he's coming handy all of our ladders are right here we got a couple pipe poles board just want to make sure to check the condition of those make sure there's nothing uh, wrong with them make sure they're in good working order here we have our hearse tools, which are very important on car accident scenes. Um, they're battery operated. We want to make sure every one of these batteries are fully charged and that our reserves are fully charged. Which I've already checked these and I know that they're fully charged. So um, we will run them. Uh, we'll open them fully up. We'll close them on the spreaders and the cutters as well as the ram just to just to make sure it's in working order and we do that every every shift moving along we have more bottles we want to check make sure we're at the proper psi and that they're completely full and another thing that i i always like to check is our toolbox we got some power tools and um some tarps extinguishers we got to make sure all the extinguishers are in good working order and they're fully charged going around just making sure all the lights are on right here I run I run the regular lights right here just to see our emergency lights with nothing on then I will put the flashers on and then I will also put all of our scene lights on I want to double check and make sure all those are in working order My name is Parker Pounds. I'm a firefighter paramedic. I've been here for four years. Have you done anything outside of firefighting? Because you got in, yeah. Uh, I graduated in May of 2018. And I knew I was going into the fire academy before I graduated high school. Um, and I started August of the same year. So I went right from high school right to the fire academy. What do you like most about firefighting? 
I would go crazy sitting in an office, not doing the same thing every day, looking at the same computer, looking at do, wearing the same clothes. Like I, I love coming into work, going out into the, you know, into the world, seeing, meeting different people, uh, running, getting into different situations every day. I come into work. I know I'm not going to do the same repetitive thing every day. Would you say that you're the funniest person in all both fire stations? Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. So why, why is that? Uh, cause I mean, every time I work with a different crew, they're always like all pounds is working today. Like I know we're going to, we're going to get a laugh in today. And there's a sense of pride with that. I can see. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's, that's my personality. I, I like to make people laugh. I like to make sure everyone's having a good time. So I take pride in that. Do you feel like firefighting gives you an advantage when it comes to Oh, absolutely. It's one of the perks of it. If you can't use the perks of the job, what's, what's, what's the point of it? Uh, how early on in dating would you tell someone that you're a firefighter? Uh, they know pretty off the bat what my career is. And do you think that that's ever been a challenge, though, as well, like on the flip side of that coin? Uh, I will say my last relationship I was with is while I was in paramedic school and going to work for 24 hours, leaving here in the morning, going to class for eight hours, going home and sleeping and getting up the next morning and going to do a 12-hour clinical. How does your family feel about you being a firefighter? Oh, they love it. They love telling everybody I'm a firefighter. My mom and all of her social media has firefighter mom and all that, all that good stuff. Safe to say she's got a firefighter mom decal on her car, too. It, I wouldn't be surprised if she had, hasn't had one already. Do you see yourself doing anything in the future? No, absolutely not. I love coming into work every day. It's something different. Um, you know, I get to come in, hang with the boys, eat some good food, run some good calls, meet some cool people. It's, I love it. Andrew Dinsmore. I'm a lieutenant at the Haines City Fire Department. I've been here for a little over eight years. Okay. Is this your first department? No. I've worked for two different departments prior to this. I worked for Lake City up in North Florida, and I was a wildland firefighter for Florida Forest Service for two years. How do you feel like Haines City compares to those two other agencies? More aggressive. We're expanding a lot more calls. And I worked for Lake City. It was maybe 1,000 to 2,000 calls a year. Here we're doing almost seven. So you get your experience here. Forestry is all wildland firefighting. And I'm glad I don't do that anymore. What would you say the biggest differences are between wildland and structure? You really don't have to deal with medical calls on wildland. Here, it's an everyday thing. How do you feel fire reacts differently with wildland versus structure? Usually in wildland fires, you know, it's natural burning. It's woods. It moves fast. It's temperamental with the wind and the weather and everything like that, but so are structure fires, but you're dealing with a lot of chemicals in structure fires and everything we make nowadays cheaper, but we're stuff that burns hard bad. What's your favorite thing about firefighting? The hours, uh, the camaraderie. It's almost like being back in the military. I made some good friends here. So how long were you in the military? Eight years in the Marine Corps. Okay. And what was your MOS in the military? I was a wireman and a radio operator with an artillery battalion. But when I ended up in Iraq, I was part of an SSE team it's called Sensitive Site Exploitation. And I got attached to 2nd Intel Battalion, which I went out and did foot patrols, vehicle patrols, boat patrols on Euphrates River, cleared structures. I traveled the whole Ambar province 
from 2006 to 2007. Why did you leave the military? I came about an eight year mark and it was either stay or go. And they offered me 10,000 to stay. And they're like, we'll promote you to staff sergeant. And I was like, eh. and then they said, well, we're leaving for Afghanistan in six months. And I was like, yeah, you had me once. I'm good. Do you see yourself doing anything different than firefighting? I was going to become a cop before this. Really? Yes. I actually was going through the hiring process for Miami Dade and St. Petersburg Police Department. And that was the year that two law enforcement in both departments died. I was like, uh, and Miami Dade interviewer was like, I'm going to let you know, you know, if you come work here, you're probably going to get shot at your first year. And I was like, I did that for the past year. I don't want to do that again. Can you think back to your first fire? And what was that like? My first fire was a RV camper that I thought was to be a structure. And I was a proby firefighter in Davenport. And Davenport was on the other side and shot the their nozzle through and knocked my mask off my face and everything. I had to hold my breath and get back away from the RV. It was quite interesting. I was mad. That was your first fire? Yes. What's going on through your head when you get back to the station? I was really mad. I wanted to fight somebody. I'm not going to lie. How do you feel about this series? I love it. My kids love it. My wife loves it. She keeps posting it on her Facebook for everybody to watch. My kids tell all their friends at school about it. My dad's going to be on TV. So uh, we got a call in for a medical alarm. Um, it's probably about, about three miles away from our location. Um, you know, we, we responded. We, we had no notes. We could not, uh, dispatch could not get a hold of the um, person that has a life alert. Um, so we had to uh, go there with no notes. Um, upon arrival, we could not make contact with anyone that lived in the home. The house was completely locked up. All the windows were shut with blinds. We couldn't see in. We banged on every window, banged on every door, trying to see if there was an, anyone inside. Um, at that point, we um, went next door to the neighbors, which happened to be a family member, um, where she tried to contact the person um, two or three times, and we could not get a hold of her. At this point, we have to assume the worst. So that's when we had to make entry, force entry into the side door. Upon entry um, residence, uh, we found out that the patient accidentally activated their life alert system. Um, luckily, there was no emergency, but there, I mean, there's many times that it could be an actual emergency. We just don't know. And we have to uh, uh, go on the side of caution and make sure that, you know, uh, we're justified for going in. We tried every aspect, but at the same time, we do have to make sure, you know, we serve the community. We have to make sure that they're safe, even though it was an accident, we still had to for century. just dispatched an MBA on 27. It turned out a very minor incident. Uh, um, actually, Hain City Engine 2 was on scene first, and um, I usually come out there as a cautionary thing to help him. Um, he pretty much canceled me before scene. I got on scene anyways to see if everything was okay, and everything was. There was no injuries, so um, very easy call. Most of our calls are this way, just to make sure everything is good, but um, 
everything was fine, so. So my name is Casey Seabury. Uh, I'm an engineer. Um, I've been with Haines City for a little over nine years now. How many calls did you say you typically run on a shift? On a shift? Um, like 12 to 15. Do you think that that's higher than other stations? It's higher than it used to be here. So uh, I know that I, I feel like Haines City is busier than some county departments. Some county departments, do they get smoked. They, they really get hammered a lot. But I feel like we can compete like with the call volume. I think we almost ran 7,000 calls last year. So and that was out of two stations. What did you do before this? I was a chef. Yeah. Did you like being a chef? Uh, I did at first and then kind of got burned out on it. So and you featured cooks on this show. Mm -hmm. Who do you think's the best station chef? Uh, probably Linfante. Really? You're not yeah. going to say yourself? That's I don't know. I, I don't cook for everybody. So I used to every once in a while, but, um, like I said, I got out of it. Like I didn't, I don't want to cook. That's why I'm not a chef anymore. So sure. what do you think is the most rewarding thing that you've experience it could be a moment it could be just a part of the job since being in the fire service oh, goodness um it's nice when people call the station after like a call or something and say thank you like or you know like we're not you don't do the job for recognition it's not you do it because you want to do it like you want to help people out you want like that's the rewarding part is when it's an actual good call and you feel like you've accomplished like what you've trained for. So it's an unexpected, but yeah, unexpected, nice. unexpected, like attaboys are, are always good. Yeah. You know? Nice. So if someone is looking to join a fire department, they're willing to move. Mm -hmm. Why would they choose Haines city? Uh, Cause you get to experience a lot of stuff. Like a lot of places don't have fires anymore, but I mean, we still have a good amount of fire. So you can get some crazy calls here. My name's Caleb Kuhn, uh, rank is Lieutenant, and I've been with Hank City for about 13 years. So I believe, and I'm not great on counting here, my recollection might be wrong, but dang near everybody I've talked to 
Haines City was their first and only fire station. Why do you think that is? I mean, it's a unique place. I, I do feel that um, there's a lot of history here. I do feel like the camaraderie and brotherhood here, um, a lot of guys really enjoy it. Um, it is like a small town feel, but um, I feel like that kind of gets everybody meshed well. Um, it, it builds bonds and good friendships. And honestly, we have a good time here together. So I think a lot of guys that come in here and that value that portion of the fire service, they, they tend to stay here. So my first fire, it was my second shift here, like my second 24 hour shift. Um, and it was a big commercial pallet factory um, off 1792 West going towards um, Lake Alford. It was my, like I said, my second night. And we, um, I was on the tower truck that we had at the time. And when we left the station going down the road, you could see the glow, you know, it was, um, I would say like sometime in the middle of the night, early morning. Um, and when we got there, it was just so much on fire and so much stuff on fire. It was, I mean, it was surreal to me, you know, I mean, I had went through fire academy and all the burns and stuff you do, but nothing was, I had never seen anything that would compare me or get me ready for that, you know? Like, yeah. um, so when we were pulling in, it was a really small driveway going down to where the, the building was on fire and a lot of the pallets and machinery around it was on fire. So it was just a small like um, roadway that we had to use to gain entry um, into the, into the facility or, or, you know, whatever you want to call it, the pallet factory. So um, I remember stepping out of the truck and just the amount of heat that, you know, I felt, I was like, I just couldn't believe it, you know? Um, and my Lieutenant that had been there for some time, you know, he's, you know, getting out and it's like, it, it didn't even affect him. You know, me and the firefighter in the back, we're trying to get our, our air mask on because that the, the air is so hot. It just, you know what I mean? It's hurting your throat. It's hurting your lungs. So, um, that was my first one. It was a, it was a pretty big fire. So I got, I guess I got broken pretty good on the first one, but, um, I still remember it pretty vividly.
Dude, there's no way that my face looks normal right now. 